Okay, this is, uh, I'm going to do a basic tutorial on how to model a simple knife in Maya. And later I will cover how to export it using, um, I think it's Prowl's exporter with Maya. Um, I'll get to the export stage in another video. For right now, I'm just going to do a basic model of a knife, or a basic knife model. Now, first thing you do, open Maya. Uh, you'll notice that you can't see my mouse. My screen capture program doesn't have the mouse built in yet, just to be able to see it. I will point with uh, video editing stuff. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is make sure like right here, you want to make sure you're in polygons. If it's uh, 2008, it'll be polygons. If it's an uh, earlier version, if it's like Maya 7 or 6, it'll probably be modeling. It really doesn't matter too much. It just affects certain things that you um, can access within Maya. And you can edit these any way you want, but by default, you're going to want to change these to polygons or whatever. Now, first thing we do go to create, go to polygon primitives. It should be more or less the same between versions. You want to select plane. Um, for 2008 you have to drag it out, but if you're not using 2008, and even if you are, you may want to look at this also. You'll see over on the right, you'll see P plane 1 has been created you'll see things like translate XYZ. That's just um, distance from the origin, which is just where these two dark black lines cross uh, by default. Uh, you'll see a shape node, and probably the most important part for the beginning is the input node, polyplane 1. You'll see the width, you'll see the height. You'll want to change these. Um, usually mm, go with 100 by 100. And you can come back and change these later, but for right now, those should be good. What we're doing is we are going to take our sketch and basically apply that to a plane, and then later we will use the Create a Polygon tool, or Create Polygon tool, and click to create vertices, sort of like you would uh, use the pen tool in Illustrator, if you know that program. Don't worry, it's not too complicated. All right, so you got this plane. Go back up. Oh, if you can't see the channel box here, look up here on the upper right, and this button, like under the X here, should be able to change the channel box change to the channel box. You can also see the attribute editor or channel box and then it's the um, tools for like selecting stuff, specific options, and the attribute editor. But go back to the channel channel box. Um, you'll see the translate X, Y, Z. Um, you want to actually rotate this. It's just easier for me. Uh, rotate X by 90, and you'll see that it just tilted upward. And now on the left side, you'll see the movement tool. Actually, you could probably just type it here in the uh, channel box, too. By the way, uh, if you hold Alt and left click and drag, you can tilt the camera. And if you can't quite see your target, try to hold Alt and middle mouse button to drag and move around with the camera. By default, use the perspective camera. If you're doing source modeling, you shouldn't need to edit any camera options. Just use the basic perspective. You can hit the space bar, just tap it, and you see a front stop and side view. But for right now, let's stick to the perspective view until a little later when we start modeling. All right, so we got this plane. But before we apply the texture, we need to be able to actually see textures on this. There are three numbers you can use to make this visible. If you hit number four, like on your keyboard, um, 
above the R key, not the numpad. I'm not sure if numpad, okay, numpad does do it, the numlock or numpad. You would want to hit 4 to do wireframe, 5 does just as basic gray sort of texture, which you don't want. You want to hit 6. That actually shows the actual texture. And then go up to window, go to hypershade, uh, sorry, window, rendering editors, hypershade. You'll see a whole bunch of stuff here. Normally it's very intimidating. It was for me when I first started, but it's really quite simple. You basically want to drag something to the work area to be able to work with, but it's not too much involved. Basically, we're going to work with a Fong E texture. You can left click it and it should appear in the work area, or you can middle mouse drag to pull it on there, but I'm going to select that and delete it. You have Fong E1, and if you double click this, it'll open up the attribute editor, which will show you extra options for this texture. Um, what you want to do, or, well, sorry, is you see where color is, you'll see to the right, and there's a checker box. You want to click it, you'll see a create render node. What you want to do here is you want to select a file type, and then we're going to have our sketch come up so we can use that as a base. So left click file, you'll see some options here. All you need, where it says image name, select the folder option, go find your image. Come on. Okay, so go in here you want to use the selection tool here and select your plane. Right click on Fong E and hold it. You'll see several options. Anytime you right click those options will pop up. Hold right click and assign material to selection. Remember you click Fong E for that. And you do have a bit of a problem here because it's scaled incorrectly it's also not quite in a good position. What we want to ultimately do is draw around this. We scale by 1.5. Typically when you're modeling, you never want to use the scale, but this isn't going to be our final model. This is just a prop, basically, that we're going to draw with or draw around. If you use the rotate tool, the fifth from the top here, you can actually rotate this however you want. It's probably a more intuitive way of doing it or the best way to do it, at least to kind of shape it how you want. And then you can edit it in the channel box to make sure it's perfectly right. So, okay, rotate X90, rotate Z90. All right, now you hit the space bar, and you'll be given the front, side, and top view. What you can do is you go into your front view here, it may be the side view also, depending on how you do it, or even the top view. And you can actually, while you see this blue grid that's sort of around here for the front view, that shows that it's selected. If you hit 6, you can see your uh, little sketch there. So now that we have that, we can now start to draw around this. But I want to do one more thing first. This is always a good idea to do. When you have the channel box here, under, where, under it you should see the layers. If you select it and create empty layer, or select layers and then create empty layer, you'll get a layer one that pops up. And you can double click this and you can change the name. I'm just going to name it sketch so I know what it is at any time. And then you want to make sure you have your your little texture here selected, right click, add selected objects. Now what that does is we can immediately make this thing disappear by just hitting the little V button. But that's not what we want. We want to be able to see it. What I actually want to do is use this as a template. So what you do is you click the box in the middle until it shows an R. Now, you can see I'm trying to select this, or maybe you can't see, but I am trying. And you can't select it. So 
now you have a template to start working with.